Hello, well in this film we're going to be doing the levelling off of the edges on the black bag and also polishing them as well. And it's always very nice this because it makes the whole thing look really good. Anyway, here goes. So I've stitched all around this side now and I'm just going to very lightly skive over the leather just to even it up. So it's just a gentle pass or two just to get both bits of leather completely the same height. So what I'll be doing in a minute, I'll be dyeing and polishing these edges so it looks a bit exposed at this second but once I've done the dyeing and the polishing they'll look rather nice. So again just taking off enough to get down to both levels of the leather. Having flattened these and got them leveled up, I'm now just going to go along. If you don't have an edge shave, you can just use a knife for this, but I'm just going to gently make the corner a bit rounder. So it will look so much neater when it comes to polishing if it's a bit rounder. So I'm just taking off a little sliver of leather. I'll do it both sides. It also sort of stops the edge getting bent and burred. As things hit it and then sort of fall away from it. So that's now quite nicely rounded. I do this on my leather belts, which I know a lot of people don't bother doing. But the reason I do it is partly with belts because of comfort. But actually also it does improve the wearability because you've got a rounded edge. It doesn't get sort of scuffed up in the same sort of way as a square edge would get dented and damaged. So you've got a thicker surface of leather and things around bounce off. It will also make the polishing of these edges look a lot neater when it comes to it. Doesn't take that long, but of course all these little details add up. So if you're doing this on a production basis, it's another process which isn't such a good thing probably. But I'm going for quality here, so I don't mind that. So that's it rounded off. Now I'll be dyeing that and then polishing these edges, but they're ready now for that process. So round off the flap corners for the bag. So you could do this with a knife, as I have a, a round belt cutter type tool. I, I'm using that. And then I'm just gonna round over these curves so it matches the other parts that I've rounded. There we are. And now I'm going to dye the edges black. So well, I've been shaving edges, taking them down a bit. Just going to sink in a bit more black leather dye. This leather is dyed through, but it's never as intense as the surface colour. And it also means if the bag gets scuffed in use, you've got further layer of dye having penetrated so it will keep a nice black appearance on the corners. Well, they're bits that normally get the worst wear. So I'm using a windscreen glue applicator, a wool dauber, to apply the dye. These give quite a heavy dye loading, so you'll find it really will splodge down. And I find if you brush it sort of both ways, you'll get a good dye saturation. You can buy these in bulk because they're used in the auto glass industry. Let's 
give it a wipe round, get rid of any excess. And then I'm going to die round on the other flap elements as well. There we are, keep that coming down. So while the dye is still on there, wet, I'm giving a quick burnish. So I find that helps to lay the fibres down. I can always go with some gum prag later, but it's quite nice to try and get the leather fibres going down first. You can see a nice shiny edge coming there. it looks rather nice. So I'm just using pointy end of the stick and using some slots in the stick as well. I've got those edges. You immediately see you get quite a nice edge where it's been done, which is fair compared to where it hasn't been done. I may need to go again you know, over this later, but it's quite good while the dye is still drying to actually get those fibres down because they're wet with the dye and it's a good opportunity. Ditto going around the flap. I've tried power burnishers and personally I'm not a great fan of them. I think sometimes one can misfeed the leather and damage what you're doing. And actually a bit of hand burnishing, it doesn't take very much longer in my opinion. I get a bit sick of it if one's doing long, long lengths, but um, it is quite nice. You can see it coming up and you really can work with the fibres when you're doing it by hand. I do quite like these little wooden burnisher tools, they're very reasonable. Get them in online auctions, often from China. The actual grooves on the underside have different, not only different widths, but actually different sort of um, curvatures. So you may find that what works on one piece won't work on the other because of thickness differences, and it's worth experimenting and trying them out a little bit. You'll soon find one size which works really well compared to the other sizes. looking quite nice. Looking quite good. I'm going to dye this inner edge. So again, a bit more dye. I'm just using fairly standard sort of dye. I 
have rounded all these edges inside very slightly just so as you put your hand in you don't sort of hit a hard corner again tiny little details just makes it a slightly nicer thing to use little details add up <laughs> those slipped off. quite a nice fairly shiny edge already. Right that will do for time being on that but that's a lot lot neater. Looking a bit happier I think. Well it's beginning to look a bit more like a case now. So here goes. Let's look around. Quite pleased where this is going. So I think the next thing to do is to make the straps and the buckle except for fitting for here and also to sort out the front catch as well. So that's what I'll be doing next. I anyway, hope you enjoyed watching that one and thanks very much. Bye bye.